Thank you for your patience, everybody, with the technical difficulties. I'm Carrie Cranett. I'm one of the practitioners in this office, and I'm gonna to talk to you today about meal ideas for the month. Um, does anyone have any pressing questions that they know they want answered before I start? Go ahead. I'd like to know um, how I can get this done with my diabetes. Okay. All right, so diet with Okay, any other pressing that you know you want me to try to answer? Hopefully I'll answer everything that would come up and you certainly can ask questions along the way too, but I just wanna make sure if you had a question that you came here specifically to have answered that I make sure I get it done too. Um, well, I'm a student and um, it's difficult to, I also commute from home, so I'm constantly like, I'm on a really specific meal um, dietary program, so okay. just, I find it, I just started this program and so it's, I'm finding it kind of difficult It's a little specific, so if we don't yeah. have time, I'll answer questions at the end for you a little bit too, but okay. we'll try and get to that too. We're gonna dive right in, because I know I'm starting a little late, so if you do have questions at the end, that way people can skate and I can answer the questions of the people who wanna stick around. So, I have been a practitioner in this office since about 2011, but I started working in this office as an assistant first in 2007. So I came to the office as a patient initially. I saw Dr. Schmidt, he's our leader and champion. Um, he got me feeling really good. My background is that I have a bachelor's in nutrition, so I come to this work with a traditional degree. I was trained um, at Madonna University. I was trained kind of the normal way to do things. I went to work at U of M and realized I was catching people way too late in the chain of their health to actually help improve their life. Um, I worked there for a, about a year, had a young child at home and thought, I think I made a big mistake. This isn't what I went to school for. It's not what I went, um, planned on doing. It's not how I planned to help people. So I quit that job, felt like I wasted an awful lot of money on my college degree, went back to doing some of the things that I loved and knew, which was teaching dance, teaching Pilates. I raised my kids like that and then ended up here as a patient of Dr. Schmidt's in 2006 when I ended up pretty much debilitated with back pain, even though I considered myself pretty healthy and was a Pilates teacher and a dance teacher and ended up having to come to him for some trouble I was having. That is a longer story and I won't tell it tonight, but we'll get into that at some other point if you want to hear my long story. But for now, we'll talk about you a little bit. So let's go. I don't exactly know how to do this, so here we go. So this is kind of the main thing we teach in the office, if I had to say there's a main thing. The body uses protein, fat, water, vitamins and minerals for energy and to repair tissue. There are things called essential fats and there are essential amino acids, which, which are proteins, but there are no essential carbohydrates. So you don't need carbohydrates for health. They come in by nature of a healthy diet with vegetables and fruit and the healthy foods you're eating, but you don't need to seek out carbohydrates by nature of, you know, we just, they aren't essential to our health, but those other things are. So if you have adequate protein and fat to be utilized and limit, that's kind of the goal, that you limit your sugar intake, limit your carbohydrate intake, that goes to the diabetes discussion too. So that's kind of the general recommendation. In your handouts I gave you, there is this list which is basically the foods that I tell people to choose from when you are grocery shopping. My philosophy, I guess, if I have many, one of them is choose the best quality foods you can find and afford. So it isn't always going to be the same at different times in your life. If I'm traveling and I have to go in Kroger, I'm gonna go to their deli and I'm gonna get some Boar's Head lunch meat and cheese and olives, and that will be my lunch rather than a McDonald's drive through But if I'm here, I will go to Arbor Farms and I will get Applegate, natural, nitrate, organic, nitrate-free, <laughs> nitrate-free, <laughs> nitrate 
ground, nitrate-free, organic, free-range, grass-fed, good meat that then will nourish me more. But it's, it can vary from time to time what you're going to be able to find, what you're going to be able to afford. So that's why I say that. The good choices are pretty much good across the board. There's always going to be individual differences with that. The maybes are maybes because a large number of people don't always test for them. So fruit is a maybe because if you're diabetic, sometimes you have to monitor or use the correct amount of fruit for you. That's why it's a maybe. It's not because it's bad. It's because for different people, they have to vary their diet a little bit with it. Cheese is a maybe. Pasteurized milk is a maybe because some people don't tolerate dairy well. So all these get to be a little bit more case by case with the maybe columns. The avoids are pretty much avoids across the board. Mostly, I think at this point, for people self-explanatory. Any questions on any of the avoids? I have a question on the maybe. What's date crystals? Date crystals are kind of newer. They make coconut crystals and date crystals. So they are, it's from the date fruit. So it's kind of a, a granulated, crystallized, a little so bit lower. So it like dissolves in the correct. liquid? Low, lower glycemic a little bit than like cane sugar, any, even the more natural sugar. So those bear a little bit lower glycemic. And they're pretty nice. They test pretty well. Other questions on this board at all? We'll keep on trucking. Good. <laughs> so what kind of cheese? I recommend raw milk cheese first. That's the best quality. The harder cheeses are going to be next. And then really, as you get into the softer cheeses, a little bit down the road. It's just everybody's going to be different. Are you a patient? Yes. Bring in the cheese and get tested for it to make sure it's okay for you. So that's what, if you're, can I ask that now? I guess I should have asked that earlier. How many people are currently patients in the office? I should have asked that the other way. How many are not? <laughs> so just a, okay, all right. Almost everybody is. Rock on. Good job, everybody. <laughs> so if you're a patient, you bring in those foods, we test you on them, that's how you know if it's a maybe or not. So then you can know for sure definitively if, you, if it tests well for you specifically. Good? Okay. All right. This is a great resource for true food information. WestonAPrice.org. So great health and food information. They have a great whole resource area about soy. They have a whole resource area about raw milk. This is where you can get some true nutritional information. Great information on feeding kids on this website. Some good snack ideas. Students on this website. More information than you could probably read in months of time, but you can kind of do searches and find the things that are most applicable to you. Great, great resource. When you are looking for your foods, for shopping for your family and as you're preparing your meals, the one of the best pieces of advice I can give people is shop the outside of the store. Number one, your shopping goes much faster. And number two, that's where you're going to find the real food. So you turn to the right and there's kind of a little fruit and vegetable section. You loop around, you're gonna see some dairy, some cheeses, things like that. If you're sticking with the outside of the store, you're gonna find the most real foods, typically. Um, some, some, I was gonna say restaurants, some stores are catching on to that and they're putting some stuff on the outsides too. But ideally, you're shopping the outside of the store and you're using the aisles for things like toilet paper. <laughs> so shopping the outside of the store will get you a little further with that. These are some tools that we recommend to people to use to make your shopping more economical and to be able to get things in bulk for feeding a family as you're shopping. So markets and farms and CSAs. We have a handout about this. I don't have it out on the counter, but I am gonna have some other handouts at the end with recipes. If you do want this handout, it is for more local CSAs and farms in the area. I can certainly grab you some of those. What's a CSA? Community Supported Agriculture. These are typically small farms where people can buy memberships and they get deliveries of the things that they grow. And it varies at different times during the growing season. It varies depending on what they get, what they're harvesting. It's, they're very cool. So there are a lot of those in the area too. Can, Sid, could you grab them or Jan, one of you, the markets and farms handout? It's probably there so we can have some on the counter too. 
I thought we kept it stocked there. Could the PAs use it? Okay, we'll oh, find the Markets I'll and Farms it. hand. Okay, we got I one coming from there. We'll get a Markets and Farms <laughs> hand up if anybody's okay. interested in that. I highly recommend and use frequently because I am a mom a crock pot. So getting a crock pot, using it, you can put stuff in it the night before and have it ready by morning. You can put stuff in it in the morning and have it ready for dinner. I said to someone earlier today because they were talking about the chili that they make. I throw frozen chicken, salsa, and sometimes like green chilies or pepper, whatever I have in my house, I will throw that in my crock pot in the morning, put a little chicken broth in so it has enough liquid and come home to almost taco chicken. At which with nothing bad in it, ready to go. I don't have to stop and cook anything. So there are lots of ways to use a crock pot and have your food ready so that you don't have to go home. And my daughter did use one at school. I don't know if she was allowed to use one at school. <laughs> um, but we used to, what we used to do for her, I'll just talk about this for a second because it kind of applies to everybody too. We do some prep ahead where I would brown some ground beef for her. And then she would take the crock pot, add some meat sauce or some sauce to the meat. She'd have some things for pasta albeit I'm not a big fan of pasta, but for her at her dorm, she could make herself some pasta and then have the meat sauce or throw the pasta right in there at the end. So even a grain-free pasta would be an option with that too. So there, she, she'd make chili in her crock pot. We would brown the meat ahead and then she would take all the fixings to make chili in her crock pot. So that could be a tool even at school that you could use. Just, oh, like a lot of them. <laughs> like 20. Question on the crock pot. Yeah. I recently read a great recipe So growing up on a farm, putting the milk in there and leaving it cook overnight, it's not going to burn? It's not going to run? I out. don't usually do milk overnight. So you could do okay. water with right. the with the oats and things like that. And just the last 15 or 20 minutes, turn it to high and add the milk at the very end. At the end. Just okay. at the very end, turn it to high. Or just do that part on the stove real quick to warm the milk in. Well, mine usually starts with a can of pumpkin. Oh, even yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a great idea too. Yeah, and that would add good fats, good, you know, the good um, beta carotenes, mm -hmm. other good, that's a, that's a great Oh wait, great pumpkin, pumpkin, shred your apple. Don't cut it in pieces, just shred oh, she's it. Got, she's got, she's got breakfast. People say they don't have time for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it's I great. I make it on Sundays, yeah. and freeze it, take it out the night before, in and out of the microwave. Yeah. Two minutes, you're done. Yeah, great, great tip for the, for using a crock pot with that. I do like the pumpkin okay. idea. Not the, milk till the end. Not the milk till the very end. If you could finish with it quick or just put it in a little pot to warm it up with that, that'd be ideal. I do say, and you've already read it because I've been sitting here for all cook ahead on your days off, soups and stews, roasts, things that you can use later in the week, the freezing of it. That's always a great way to be prepared ahead. So one of my things I always say is the biggest thing you can do is be prepared and have a plan. But Kind of even, even almost more important than that is then you have to do it. You have to execute it too. So the best laid plans, that's all great. And it's and you need a plan because the people who kind of are like, I just, I don't have a plan. I'm going to drive through McDonald's. That's not going to be <laughs> ideal. Have a plan, but then actually take some steps to figure out a way to execute it. So if it means cooking ahead, if it, whatever it means to you, it's different for everybody. Use those things so that you can have the plan in motion too, because that's gonna make you feel better. This is a resource. Some people like this, some people don't, but I give it to everyone so they have it. This is a website called The Fresh 20. There are many helpful websites if you search paleo ideas online, if you search Whole30, which we're gonna talk about in a second, meal ideas. There are many, many resources online for recipes. I'll have a few for you here, but this is a website, it is a paid website where they do send you ideas for foods. They send you recipes and the ingredients you need to buy. The title is because it is literally 20 ingredients. So they would send you the ingredients you need to buy, the 20 things you need for your meals for the week, and the recipes for all those foods. There are gluten-free options. There are vegetarian <coughs> options for one. So there are lots of ideas on here. It is my understanding, and I don't use this because I don't pay for my food information, I just, I don't. But it this helps a lot of people, so that's why I give it. But uh, it is my understanding that there are also archives, so you don't have to pay for the information. You could just go in and look at some of their old menu plans and use some of those too. So I, that's my understanding. Maybe don't quote me on that, but that's <laughs> a 
resource some people have liked in the past. Excuse me, was that the one that was on Shark Tank? I don't even know. Like two years ago, that I'm started down sure. in Chicago? I am not sure. Ah, that was a familiar. resource from that, another patient. It sounds familiar from Shark Tank. Shark Tank, yeah, because yeah, they wanted to get fresh food into the city so that people quick and fast and how to make it. It's possible. Not. It's okay. possible. I don't know for sure, okay. just because I don't want to. I'm usually here at this time still, so I don't want to let those shows. Um, this is another, so those re, that resource, the previous one, which is why I don't know a lot about it, and this one are both from patients. They tell me this stuff and I pass it on to you because certain, if people find something they like, I want you to know about it too. Even if it's not what I use, it's something that could be helpful. This is another paid website. It's called Plan to Eat, and it is where you can collect your recipes from online drop and drag them into one location and then be able to print your shopping list, access it at any time. So she said she uses her iPad for this and then she can use her recipes from there. So I wanted to share that one because I have some people that really like that one too. And this is the Whole30. So has anyone done the Whole30 yet? Has anyone, anyone familiar with it? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you've not done it though? I've done it pretty close. Okay, not totally. pretty close to it. So the first thing I will say about it is Dr. Childress and I, Dr. Amanda, are doing the Whole30. Uh, it'll be my second time through it. It might be her third. We're doing the Whole30 starting February 1st. If you want to do it with us, we want kind of this group <laughs> mentality with it to help each other through it. So we'll be making a lot of Facebook posts about it. We'll have more information up in the office about it, a little more, a little more interactive. And then we'll be doing a lecture on it on February 17th. That'll be midway through it. It'll be a little more interactive lecture where people can share some of their ideas. Or if you're not quite ready to do it on the first, that'll give you the information or kind of leg up to start it in March. So that's that's when we'll do the lecture. It's February 17th. It's a Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And like I said, it'll be a little more interactive with ideas like the, like the crockpot idea with the pumpkin, but there is no grain allowed on the Whole30. So <laughs> the Whole30 is a sugar-free, Grain free, dairy free, alcohol free, gluten free <laughs> diet. <laughs> I started a week ago the candida diet, so that makes it's sense. very, very similar. It's very similar to an anti fungal or anti candida <laughs> diet. Yeah, so it is. It's, it's what this website, their website is fantastic, and I do have handouts on it that you can take at the end. I've got a couple handouts that you can just pick and choose what you want or don't want. One of the things they say about the Whole30 is you're not allowed to say it's hard, but we know it's hard. And, that's, and it is what I say. So it's, it's, they say you're not allowed to say it's hard because there are so many harder things to have to go through in life than to clean up your diet. And they, you know, that's valid and they're right. But is it hard? Absolutely. Absolutely. I sat at Applebee's and could not order one piece of their food, not even their steamed vegetables because they put some kind of junk on them. I, I didn't know what to eat at Applebee's. There was no food there. I just, which usually I didn't notice till the whole 30 where I was trying to really be a little more particular and I thought, no, I'm even their steamed vegetables are not actually food. They're putting something else on them too. Butter sauce or something weird. Not to pick on Applebee's if anyone is watching the video because it's now being filmed. So it's it's it was just hard to do it at places like that, but it is possible. I've done it once. I do think Dr. Amanda has done it twice now. So we'll be doing it in February if you want to join us. Great information online. They have lots of Facebook posts that they make. They have lots of Instagram presence too. Major changes with that diet when you do it. So once you have that data too. These are two cookbooks that are great if you're looking for food ideas or if you're looking for recipes. Um, Nourishing Traditions is the Weston A. Price cookbook in a sense. Sally Fallon is the head of Weston A. Price. So this is a great cookbook from Nourishing Traditions. The whole first, I wanna say third of the book, that might be a little bit overstating it, is information on why the recipes exist in the way that they do. So it's a lot of information on why the fats are good, why they're recommending organ meats, things like that. And then it moves into the actual recipes that correspond to it. And along the sides of each page, it talks about why that recipe might be good or helpful for certain things. Eat Fat, Lose Fat is a great book for the people who are afraid of fat. So, so many people come to us and they're so ingrained or taught to believe that fat is bad, they have to eat 
low fat. This is a great book for explaining why fat is good for you. Fat nourishes your brain, fat nourishes your heart. You need fat to feel full. If you don't have enough fat, you're not making correct hormones. Those were all different lecture topics I just gave you, but those are all reasons why we need these good fats in our diet. They make you feel full and you don't crave as much sugar and carbohydrates when you're eating good fats. So that's a great educational book if you are if you have a fear of fats. Anybody afraid of fats? You're a little afraid of fats? <laughs> I will tell you, I'll tell you a little personal story. When I was in college, the, it was the huge low fat craze, huge. Um, it was the snack walls, cookies, and hot dogs were low fat. Everything was low fat. That was the start of the real, real craze with it. I was starving, starving all the time. I could not eat enough food and I was the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life. I weighed, I stopped weighing myself at some point, but probably about 165, 170 pounds. It would go up and down a little bit, starving and eating low fat. When I went to school at Madonna, I, I, that was when I was at I was at Grand Valley for a little while. I transferred to Madonna, started eating better because I was going to school for nutrition, so it was better. But then I morphed into a little bit more of a vegetarian diet, and I was still so hungry. It was just I wasn't getting enough fat. I wasn't getting enough protein for me. So if it, experiment with it a little bit, you do lose weight when you eat higher fat. I eat. A lot, a lot, a lot of fat. Um, we go through butter in my house. My husband jokes about how much butter we go through in our house. Like we need butter and then it's, you know, it's, it, we really all are really seeking out good fats because it gives us energy. It makes us feel good. I'm still, you know, energized at 7.30 at night. I've been seeing 20 some patients today. It's, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel full. So don't be too afraid, too afraid of fats. Okay, I said I would go fast. I'm at 7.30. I do have this resource for you as a handout too if you're interested. If you want to know what fish is good at any given time, this website is updated pretty frequently. Um, it is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. They monitor what is being overfished, what fish might be a little more toxic at any given time, what's more sustainable at any given time. So yes, line caught is always gonna be best. Organic is gonna be best. So, but those things all are part of what goes into what they look for. So if you really are concerned about the fish you're eating, this is your resource for that. And I do have a little, it's, it almost looks like a little pocket carrier for your wallet about the fish if you're interested in that. I can give you that. This is the meal ideas for them. So this was generated out of a lecture we used to do a long time ago where the idea behind this, and you should have the whole month there, is that we give you a protein or kind of the main course idea and you put something with it. This is not to say that everyone likes lamb or everyone wants a fish tackle. This is just to give you some ideas that if you plan your month ahead, it is much easier to know what you will be making and have the food so that you will prepare it. Um, this was generated uh, from me originally because I would do this when I was teaching dance and teaching Pilates and I had kids, I would do a week of a meal idea at a time. I would put it on the refrigerator at the start of the week and everybody could make their little additions or corrections or things they wanted different to it. I would shop for the week and have those foods on hand so that we would have healthy foods to use during the time. But that way the kids got to have a little input in it, but I also had the things on hand that we could use. Um, so just a great way, and, and this is just to give you some ideas for the whole month. Any questions on that or anything so far? I Sorry. have a question. Uh, you mentioned on foods to avoid, yeah. you said uh, soy. Can you speak a little bit about genetically modified soy versus not? Soy? Like an organic soy? Yes. So genetically modified, horrible. That's right. the big problem with it. Soy in general though, and Weston A. Price would give you more, much, much more, more information to, on this than I can possibly do in a night. But soy is, even when it's organic, hard to digest and a bit estrogenic or hormonally imbalancing for many people. I'll say many people. 
So because it looks and acts a little like estrogen, the body is sometimes a bit confused by it, even organic. But that curve varies in topics on that. Is that hormonal changes? But it's healthy versus, yeah. yeah, it's not usually healthy. It's a little bit confusing. It would be like using synthetic hormones topically on the body or I don't want to say like a birth control pill, but kind of like putting something in your body that's synthetic that is different and that changes your hormones a bit in relation to it. So some soy, a little bit of fermented soy, miso, tempeh, some of the, the fermented options are fine in moderation. Um, but doing a lot of soy, soy milk, or things that aren't organic, not recommended because it will start to imbalance things hormonally and being hard to digest in general. A lot more information on Weston A. Price about that for sure. This is how we do what we do. So most of you are familiar with this, so I will not do a big, long informational, well, maybe I will just a couple minutes ago. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. So we assess the body using muscle testing. We push on someone's arm. This was one of the youngest patients I ever tested on her own, um, using her own arm because she eats good food, so she was totally able to be with me the whole time we did it. We use the body to assess if something is good or bad for it. Does anybody want to be a guinea pig and let me demonstrate it? You will. Are you a patient? Are you? Uh, so this is being filmed. Are you willing to be on camera? Okay, come on. Thank you. Do you want us to clap for you? No. So I don't know if she's working on anything. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So we're, this is not, I will say in a sense, this isn't real, so to speak. This is not to negate anything you're doing about your program. This is just me finding what I find. And then if you want to take it up with your practitioner, because it's something that resonates with you, then, then do that. So what I do, her arm is going to go out. What's your name? Jenny. Hi, Jenny. So this arm is going to go out to the side. Can I bring you this way a little bit? And I'm going to turn you just a tad that way. Can I, everybody good like that? Okay. So I push on her arm, and she's strong enough. She has enough energy to resist gravity and a little bit of my pressure pushing into her arm. When I do different things, sometimes her arm will be strong, and sometimes it will be weak. So if I cover her belly button, her arm goes weak. Can you all see it? It's kind of hard because it's behind you, but it went weak. I have you do this, thumb and pinky, tip to tip, and we see if this is strong and it is. So that's good, then do it with this side. So undo that, and then do it with this side. Thumb and pinky. Okay, and then you can open that. So now, I started, her body's sending messages correctly. That's what that all just told me. Those were nervous system tests. So I'm gonna start at the top. You're gonna see my back for a minute, on my apologies. And I check her brain. So what I'm looking for is if something, her pituitary is weak. So this is her pituitary, kind of lives in the brain. That's weak. Do you get headaches? Sometimes, Sometimes. not often. Do you have one now? Okay. <laughs> All right, and then I can come down her face. The pituitary is a hormonal organ. I will not say too much about this since you're on TV. So her heart, her lungs, her thyroid, those are all good. Here's her spleen, her stomach, her gallbladder is weak, her liver is okay. Good, ovaries, uterus. So all I'm doing, I'm gonna come around behind you. I put a little pressure on the spot where the organ comes close to the surface of the skin. If that organ is under stress, me just putting a little more pressure makes her arm go weak. So her gallbladder, so I'm gonna poke right here. Sorry, does that hurt? Her gallbladder and her pituitary are both weak. So then we figure out where the body wants to start. So put your middle finger into the line of your thumb, like you're gonna flick something, pull it back just a tad. Here's her pituitary and her gallbladder. They are fighting for tension, they are both weak. All right, we're gonna move forward. Take your thumb and index finger and touch yourself here. So you have to do this now here. Do you want to be a tricky pig? <laughs> All right, so it's her gallbladder that wants attention first. So take that away. Do you have any digestive trouble? I will just say that for you right now. Yeah. Okay. So she has digestive trouble. Her gallbladder is showing up weak. So this is a B vitamin that can help the gallbladder do better, and that's not for her. That was called choline. <coughs> 
here's another one called AF Beta Fruit. This is beets. It's basically a bushel basket full of beets in a jar. And that's good. So she needs some beets. Do you like beets? Yeah, they're not on the menu. Sorry, they're all looking at me. And that makes sure it's good. So maybe you need beets in pill form. So that, by holding the right supplement, it changed that organ from weak to strong. It's temporary as long as it's in her hand, but once she ingests it, it starts to actually fix the organ. So it starts to repair the tissue, and eventually, you can sit if you want. Thank you. Thanks for that. I'm checking. <laughs> eventually, then she doesn't need the supplement because the supplement is just that a supplement to a good diet. So you eat the right things, you fix the tissue with the right supplement and the tissue repairs. So that's how we do what we do. So any questions on it, on the muscle testing, or does anybody have a question from what they've experienced? Good with that. This is almost at every lecture we talk about this a little bit, because you can put any symptom you want in this pyramid and almost, I don't know, I haven't really been stumped yet. Every symptom that someone could tell me there is an organ that is malfunctioning and or a nutritional deficiency that goes with that. So you fix the organ that's malfunctioning, you fix the nutritional deficiency, and the symptom goes away. So that's what, that's what we do. That's We do it with the muscle testing and this is what we do. So we can fix headaches, we can fix allergies, we can fix diabetes by correcting the organ that might be malfunctioning and putting the correct supplements into, into play to fix the body. Questions on any symptoms or anything anybody would want to discuss? Um, I do have a question about the muscle testing. Is that technically called kinesiology? Um, it is based okay. on applied kinesiology okay. techniques. Okay. Yeah, heavily based okay. on applied kinesiology techniques. I did it fast. I did do it fast at <laughs> 745. So I will answer any questions if anyone is not a patient in the office. We do give discounts for attending this lecture. So new patient visits are typically $145 because you came to a lecture. It's a $65 visit. Even with a referral, it's actually $85. So by coming to the lecture, you get even a bigger discount than with a referral. So that's a, a new patient kind of special that we offer for coming to a lecture. I do encourage you if you are a patient to tell others about the good things that you're experiencing here or just even that we exist. <laughs> because when I came as a patient, I knew a lot about nutrition. I was searching for answers in many, many different areas and I didn't know that muscle testing existed. So then I did get referred in, someone told me to come here, said it's real weird, he won't know what he's doing and I said okay but I've seen a lot of chiropractors before and he said it's not he's not doing chiropractic he's gonna push on your arm and tell you what's wrong Oop. and I came out and tried it and it's I just encourage you to tell other people about it because if they don't know we exist we can't help people and I just want to be an alternative to the medical model I don't want to be a replacement there is a place for it there's a time for it they are saving lives but I want to be here for people when they have those chronic things that they aren't getting resolved. I don't catch them ahead of time before they get into the medical model too so that we're not cleaning up something once it's too far gone. Kidney failure, once it's happening, is really hard to fix. We wanna get you way sooner in the chain when things are still absolutely at a place where we can fix them too. So come in before you get too sick or send your people in before they get too sick. I came in pretty sick and I'm still well. I, I got well, it took a little bit of time, but I came in with a pretty severe diagnosis when I came in. But it's it's possible, it's just a lot harder, it takes a lot more time. So if you can come in a little sooner, we'll get you feeling good. So how long it takes to repair depends on how it's the treated. individual. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'll, I'll tell, fast version of my story. I, I had osteomyelitis. I was diagnosed with an infection in my bone. So 12 weeks into care, I was about 30% better. But better was better. I, I hadn't felt better with all the therapies that I had been doing for about six months. 
and they were ready to give me IV antibiotics, and I knew I didn't want to do that. Um, so that was how I did end up here. That's a little, that's a little bit different. I was here, then they wanted to do the IV antibiotics, and I said, no, this is working, let me do this a little bit longer. But that was the next step for me in the medical realm, was IV antibiotics. So I kind of, some of my care there coincided with here, and that's when I backed out of that. I, I didn't want surgery, I didn't want IV antibiotics, I was 36 years old. But it's, so it did take some time with me, but I can honestly say, I do think my back is 100% better. It's, I haven't had a follow-up MRI to prove it, but I don't have that pain anymore. It's it's one hundred percent gone. So it's so the muscle testing that you did was for organs. So how do you delineate the organ that was causing the problem? I mean, he how? did check my bone as well. Oh, so so, you can so check we well. yep. You okay. can check any area that's under stress. So mm -hmm. when you're pushing on the body, it's that it's you're putting a little bit of pressure. You're diverting blood flow, and if there's stress in the area, the arm goes weak. So yes, he was checking my organs, and my gallbladder was a big part of mine too. Um, but that was kind of some of my other symptoms. I think I just wasn't getting rid of toxins really well. But then when he touched my back, it just went weak. So that was the area we worked on specifically right at the bone issue. So yes, we can do joints, bones, muscles, anything that's, that's giving people trouble too. Right. If you do have any questions, I will absolutely stay and answer them. I have a few handouts. I'll tell you what they are and then I'll lay them maybe on the counter. If there's anyone here who isn't a patient and wants to have a screening, I do do free screenings after these. So once everybody's asked their questions, if you want a screening, I'm glad to do that just to show you what the muscle testing is like. Um, if you don't want a screening and you don't have questions, you are free to go. But if you want to ask questions, you can. And if you want a screening, stick around and I can do that too. I'll show you what handouts I have. Okay. 